Hi Marlies. It's a very, very special day in London. The sun is shining. So Marlies, we thought the next video we should shoot for you are some of the exciting tourist attractions you can see in London. The first one being the Tower of London and Tower Bridge. Beefeaters, ravens and even the gruesome history of the Tower of London make this one of the most iconic buildings to watch and see for tourists when they come to Britain each year. From the outset, the tower was designed to create fear and awe. Over 27 meters tall and built from luminous Cayenne stone, William the Conqueror's White Tower must have looked alien and forbidding to the newly defeated English, who were forced to build it in 1070. William's successors, most notably Henry III and his son Edward I, extended and strengthened the fortress throughout medieval period. By 1350, the tower had taken on the impressive form we know today, complete with daunting defences, royal accommodation, a major branch of the royal mint, and even a menagerie with lions. In 1483, 12-year-old Prince Edward and his younger brother Richard, the two princes in the tower, were imprisoned there by their uncle, the Duke of Gloucester, apparently for their own good. The Duke of Gloucester eventually became Richard III. They were never ever seen again, Mullies. But in the 1930s, two skeletons of young boys were found close to the tower itself, which we presume are the skeletons of the two young poor princes. And right next to the tower is Tower Bridge, which spans from north to south of the River Thames. Tower Bridge was built between 1886 and 1894 and is a combined bascule and suspension bridge in London. The bridge crosses the River Thames close to the Tower of London and has become an iconic symbol of London. Tower Bridge is one of the five London bridges now owned and maintained by the Bridge House Estates, a charitable trust overseen by the City of London Corporation. It is the only one of the trust bridges not to connect the City of London directly to the Southwark Bank. So Marlies, we move away from the history of the Bloody Tower and Tower Bridge and St Catherine's Dock and we come to the more palatial surroundings. The surroundings of Trafalgar Square that also holds the Portrait Gallery and the National Gallery as well. Trafalgar Square is one of the London's most significant landmarks. Originally conceived by John Nash in 1812, it was laid out by Sir Charles Barry, the chief architect of the Houses of Parliament between 1840 and 1850. Flanked on the north side by the National Gallery and built on the site of the former Royal Mews, the square features many important national monuments and has become a place for celebrations, rallies and demonstrations. So Marlies, this is day two of hopefully a most exciting adventure around London. 
today you will see a little bit more about Trafalgar Square and the centre of London. You've learned a little bit of history again and we look forward to seeing you again soon in Piccadilly Circus. Bye for now Marlies. Hi Marlies and welcome to another fun day in London this time and I want to show you around Piccadilly Circus. This is where you can have all sorts of funny experiences and it's all for free. So you can hear all sorts of types of music and it's live music as well Marlies. And you can see all sorts of strange creatures, some of them straight out of Star Wars I suspect. However, if Americans want to come to London, the Piccadilly Circus is one of the few places that you must never miss. And of course, Marlies, the most famous attraction in Piccadilly Circus is, of course, Eros. Eros, in actual fact, is the Shaftesbury Memorial Fountain, which was produced by Sir Alfred Gilbert between 1885 and 93. It's made of aluminium and bronze and stands 432 inches tall and is now in the centre of Piccadilly Circus in Westminster. So Marlies, as you can see, it's a wonderful sunny day. Hooray! We're actually expecting what's known as an Indian summer. Well, I'll believe that when I see it Marlies, but in the meantime, this is day three of a series on the things you can actually see in London for free. And as you can see behind me, the visitors are certainly enjoying the sunshine of Piccadilly Circus. So it's goodbye for now Marlies, have a good one. Hi Marlies, this is day four on your trip around London. And what are we talking about today? One of the ladies' most popular subjects. It's shopping, it's fashion, it's Oxford Street. This is the street, Marlies, that every husband fears and every wife loves. It's shopping time. And then, of course, Melise, we've got Bond Street as well. And of course, at this end of Bond Street and Oxford Street is the world-famous Selfridges. 
In 1906, Harry Gordon Selfridge arrived in London from Chicago with his heart set on opening his dream store. With his revolutionary understanding of publicity and the theatre of retail, Selfridge's flourished under the direction of this charismatic chief. Harry Gordon Selfridge, spirit of innovation, creatively lives on through its owners today. Since 2003, W. Galen Weston and his family have owned and operated the business. The only store to be named best department store in the world three times. Selfridges today is more than just the sum of its products. It's a shopping experience that promises to surprise, amaze and amuse its customers by delivering extraordinary customer experiences. And to this day, as Harry Gordon Selfridge would say, everyone is welcome. And so, Mullies, this is day four of a seven-day tour around London. Welcome to London for you. So, everybody loves shopping, Mullies. So, this is the shopping capital of the world, we think. Oxford Street, Bond Street, and who can forget Selfridges.